Deno MySQL allows us to create a database connection in our Deno application to maybe MySQL or even to MariaDB. We're going to test this out in this tutorial. We'll create a new variable here called const client. And what we'll do is we'll await a new client connection. And with this new client connection, we'll pass in a couple of objects here as properties. These properties will include a host name, which will be the IP address of the server we're connecting to, as well as a username to authenticate and a password as well. Now, in this case, I'm just connecting up to my local host system and I don't have too many settings set here. So I'm just going to keep these nice and simple. But there are other properties you can do here as well, such as pool size, as well as even connecting directly to a specific database. What we can do now is we can actually await a client execute and this actually performs a function on this specific database. Now, what I want to do is I want to create a new database on this system. And if not exist, we'll check if this database exists yet or not. Now, in this case, we're creating a database called Enoch. And if it doesn't exist, we'll essentially create it. But if it does, then we won't do anything specifically. Finally, after it's been created, we're going to use that database and we'll do some more commands on there in a bit. But for the time being, this should be enough to get us up and running. I'm going to pass in deno run and pass in the flag allow dash net. This will make sure that we can connect to the server. We'll also pass in the file name here, which is just sql.js. When we hit enter, we can see that we've connected to the database and that seems to have all worked. And if we checked here our databases and I'll refresh, I can see that Enoch was created, which is cool. What we'll do now is create a table. And before we do this, we'll just drop any existing tables that might exist with the same name, just so that we can start fresh and reload this multiple times. What we'll do is pass in drop table if exists. And in this case, we'll create a table soon called users, but we'll drop any that might already exist. Next, we're going to create a new table and this will be a slightly larger command. To do this, we're going to pass in create table users. And in here, we'll pass in some details. So we might want to have an ID with an integer, and that might be about 11 characters. That is not null and auto increments. That's usually what we have as a primary key. And this way we can make sure that everything is unique in that case. We'll also pass in a name and this might be just a regular variable of characters. And we'll do that to maybe up to 100 characters and that also won't be null. Finally, we'll set a primary key. Now, in this case, I want the primary key just to be the ID we created earlier. So that should be just about right. Finally, we'll make sure that everything is spelled correctly and we'll set an engine here for how this database will operate. So this will just be InnoDB and we'll also set a default character set. So we'll just have that as UTF-8. Great, so we've got our command here to create a table and to drop one. So we can give this a test and we'll see that that should automatically be created. We can jump here into our system and go to Enoch and we can see that user table has been created with those structures that we put in. So that's pretty cool. We can also rerun this multiple times and it should get rid of the table each time and recreate it. What we can do now is insert some data into this table to see how that works. To create a new lot of data, what we're going to do is we'll run and execute to insert some SQL data. We can do this by passing in a new variable here called result and we'll await a new client execution. And this execute will essentially call the SQL command for insert. Now, what we want to do is we want to insert into the users table and we want to insert just a username. Now, in this case, what should we have as the value? And I'm thinking we'll pass in an array of values. We can do multiple, but in this case, we'll just do a single one. And this one will just be Adrian to start off with. And since we're using the await command, we can actually console log this out. So I'm going to console log and we're going to console log out this result. Let's hit save on this and run our command once more. When we do, we can see that we created the row and we got some information that it was made successfully. So we can actually query this row now. 
Now for those coming from an SQL background, sometimes these things here don't make much sense. So you can always just do it the traditional way, such as passing in the value like you would a normal command. And that way you have something that's a bit more clear. And if we do this, we'll see that it still works. So I'm gonna just run this deno command once more. And what we'll do is we'll go to our database and we can see that Adrian here was created. The next thing that we're going to do is an update. The way we're going to do this is by doing another client execute. What I want to do is do an update query here through SQL. And what we're going to do is we're going to update the users table. What we're going to do is we're going to set the username, which currently is just as name to equal Adrian Tuarog. And we're going to do this where the essential ID is one. Uh, so we'll just pass in where ID is equal to one. We're gonna save that and we're gonna run our command over here. When we do, we can see that should be successful. And when we have a look in here and have a look at our database, we can see that our name is now being updated from Adrian to Adrian Tuara, which is cool. Then we can do some other stuff in here too. So the next thing we might want to be able to do is delete that row. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna let delete equal await client execute. And this time we're gonna pass in a delete command. So we're gonna delete. And in this case, we're gonna delete from the users table. And we'll do a where command. And this where will be where the ID is equal to one again. If this is successful, it should mean that we don't really have any users. So I haven't spelled delete correctly here, but we'll fix that up and let's run that one more time. And we can see that that's run successfully. So now if we browse in here, we don't have any results. So all of these queries are working quite well now. The only other one that I'd like to be able to do is an actual lookup. And this is if we're pulling in data. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna do let query equal await uh, client. And in this case, we're not gonna do an execute. We're actually gonna pull in a query. And this query is gonna be a little bit different. We're gonna do a select. And what we're gonna select is just the name. We can do more variables. We could do, for example, star. Uh, and we're gonna do this from the table and the table we're pulling this from is the users table where ID is equal to one. This should essentially grab our one single user result for my um, row there. And when we do, we can see that it has. We can pull in all results such as just selecting all users and results from the table here on users. But I only have the single result in here and it looks like this is working well. So this brings us to nearly the end of this tutorial. And the last thing that you'll probably want to be able to do is close any connections to the SQL server once you're finished. And to do that, you just pass in client close. When we do this, that should close off the final connection to SQL. And here we get a note that that has happened. So this is a really quick tutorial on using MySQL with Deno and hopefully it gives you an idea, but I'll be doing lots of videos around different types of connections. So you might check out some of the other ones up here. And if you don't know who I am, I'm Adrian from Australia. I do lots of videos around design and development. So if you haven't already hit like and subscribe and I'll see you in the next one. Thank you.